Hey guys, welcome to the Worldwide History Industry. Now, I have something very cool. What is this? You might be surprised to know that this is actually a record. This is called a picture disc. Now, a picture disc is, as the name suggests, a record with a picture. Now, this is a type of picture disc called a Vogue picture disc. Now, I'm going to talk about the history of these picture discs. One of the reasons is because I had a, I have a couple in my collection, and I also thought, well, I haven't found that many videos on YouTube, you know, discussing the history of the picture disc. So, with a little help from my friend, <laughs> I'm going to show you the history of the picture disc. Now, to know about the history of the Vogue picture disc, we have to know the history of the picture disc. So that way, we can piece it together, you know, like a puzzle. Now, the Vogue picture discs. Well, let's start out with the history, the beginning of the concept of the picture disc. Picture discs are still made to this day. And the thing about them is, well... It's a relatively old concept. The first picture discs can, been, can be dated as far back as the 1930s. One of the earliest commercial releases for a picture disc was a record featuring the famous country singer Jimmy Rogers. Now, this record was not the greatest. The sound quality was horrible. Well, just like most records at the time, which were these shellac records called 78s. Now, the thing about shellac is it's very fragile. And just like most normal shellac records, this record was able to break. Now, I'm not 100% certain if this early picture disc was made with or of shellac. But I can say is that it wasn't a very strong material. And nowadays they're super rare and they cost thousands. And they're especially more valuable if you find one that literally doesn't have very many chips and deep scratches. So this brings me to the Vogue picture disc. In 1946, post-World War, post-World War II, a company located out of Detroit, Michigan, called Vogue Records, started producing these. These picture discs were very different than normal, common picture discs. They were trying to market these to an adult market. Yes, that is why I said an adult market. Now, the thing about picture discs was they were commonly seen as a novelty for children and not much of something that could be well marketed towards adults but vogue the vogue records did a bit something different they did something a bit different they started making picture discs for adults and this was very different and they were moderately they were kind of successful but well Although their slight success, there were several factors that led these picture discs to have an early end. The manufacturing of these discs ended about close to a year later. And the thing about that was there were several factors. One of them was their roster of musicians and singers. They didn't have the most well-known performers. And that's something you got to think about. When you're starting a record label, especially when you're trying to start something small, an independent record label that is not part of any other record label, you got to have, you got to try to find good talent. And that was the problem with Vogue Records. They, did, they didn't find the world's greatest talent. They were, they were great. The talents were great, but they weren't the big names that, people come to expect when they think of records. Another thing 
is, well, the cost for manufacturing these. They cost it a lot more than ma manufacturing your common... They cost it a lot more than just manufacturing your typical common record, your typical common shellac record. These were cheap. These... Okay. These were cheap. These were not. These costed more than this. And because of that, these... Let me just put this down. Just put this right here. <laughs> Sorry about that. And because of that, these became less successful. Also, they weren't made in a big music spot in America, I guess you could call it. A big center where music and talent would be commonly found. They were located in Detroit. Not that there was anything wrong with Detroit at the time. Detroit was a huge, big center of industry in the U.S. And they were still at this time. This was before, of course, well, nowadays how Detroit has tons of abandoned buildings and is left decaying. You see, the problem was Detroit at the time wasn't really the kind of spot that people thought of when they thought of music. I'm just, okay, I'm going to put the record back. This is how you hold a record, remember, you don't hold it by the groups. Now, that was a big problem. Not being located in a spot that people thought of when they thought of music. A big center of the industry. Now, this was one of the early attempts. Sorry about that, my cats. This was one of the early attempts at trying to manufacture a manufacturing a picture disc for the adult market. This was one of the early attempts at trying to get adults into buying picture discs. And it wouldn't be for, from what I heard, 25 or so years till this attempt would be made again. This was basically an unsuccessful attempt. They were somewhat popular, yet at the same time, they were still, well, they were still failing. It might have not been in front of the scenes. It might have not been something that the public eye saw. It was more of a corporate thing. Now, what are these records made out of? Well, a common picture disc is made from, and this is the process, a puck made of vinyl. A puck is basically not like a hockey puck, but I guess you could think of it like that. It's basically a clump of material. So they had a vinyl puck, then a piece of paper which had the image on it, and then a thin sheet of laminate or clear vinyl placed over top of it. Then it would be put in a normal kind of record press which would stamp the grooves in, along with flattening the puck, and voila, you had a picture disc. That's a cat plunking. Now, the thing about these was the early... Picture discs were fragile. You bent it, it broke. These were made much better. They were made out of a vinyl-like plastic with an aluminum core. And that's really what revolutionized them. Yes, in the center of these records is aluminum. Now that I got the history out of the way, why not... Or why don't I show you some of these records? Let's start with the most fragile one. Although this is made of aluminum with a, you know, although this is made out of a vinyl-like plastic with an aluminum core, at the same time, plastic does wear. And it does break in pieces. As you can see, right here, I already see some damage right here. Here's... It's a bit comedic, though. Despite all the wear and tear, this is a very neat record. We see <laughs> we see the husband probably has been kicked out of the house by his wife. And he's forced to sleep in the doghouse and he's fighting over 
the last bone. Now, of course, we see a beautiful, typical the period wedding scene. I'm gonna set that right here. We also see this one. This is probably in the best condition and the most playable one. Now, these records not only had historical significance, but artistic significance. What I mean by that is you look at it. You see, the thing about this was, and of course the cats, they usually fight, so sorry about that, like I said. The thing about these records, their artistic significance, is that these records, well, had amazing artwork. This artwork was, to the period, was very beautiful, these amazing bright colors. And it was a combination of amazing art and good music in one package. And these colors made them very hard to look away from at your record store. It was very hard to look away from, ignore. It was very hard to not spot one of these. These were meant to catch your eye, and they certainly did that. Here's, like I said, this one. This one's by a guy named Art Kessel and his orchestra. Now, the last one isn't as colorful, though. This last one looks like this. This is more of a kind of bluish, whitish, grayish design on it. We see a guy and his, his beautiful girl, you know, and they're with their wedding cake. Now on the back, we see a guy who wants to touch her. She doesn't want her. The song on this is called Touch Me Not. The one on this is Let's Get Married. Now, this one record right here, this one is in the best condition. Although there's a chip right here, this one, which I just showed you, does have some some cracks in it. Now, it's to be expected. These things are over 70 years old. Now, what do you think? Do you think these records are really neat? Do you think they're, like, really cool records and very revolutionary? Well, tell me in the comments below. Like, subscribe, ring that little bell for notifications, and... These records are amazing. Thank you for watching, and thank you for subscribing.